Painting with watercolours is just one of the greatest joys on the planet and masking fluid just makes it all the more fun. Masking fluid is basically liquid rubber. You apply it to your paper and whatever is underneath it is protected. You can paint over it with your watercolours or water soluble inks. And once everything is dry, you can peel it back and you've got that protected area now revealed, which you can then paint over again or leave it as a white highlight whatever is your preference. But as much as I adore the effects of masking fluid, I found that I was barely ever touching my bottles of it because there are some challenges in applying it. The most common way is to use it with a brush. Now the challenge here is that it will dry on the brush as you're using it and you must wash it off immediately or sacrifice the brush. The other option is to use a brush that you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> it's surprising how quickly you run out of brushes that you don't like and also painting with brushes that you don't like isn't optimal either. Another way of applying it is with a fine tip bottle but this again has a different effect uh, on the paper and I like to draw freehand with masking fluid and I'm going to show you that again later in the video. I just love the effect that it gives and it's just very freeing as an exercise but drawing with the fine tip bottle you have to be a little bit careful you don't scratch into the paper and the flow through the needle tip isn't completely reliable which can be at odds with the carefree nature of masking fluid itself and there's a little bit of housekeeping with putting the tip back on once you've finished with the needle tip bottle and masking fluid as well which you know just puts me off using it which really is a shame because it is a lot of fun to absolutely go to town with lashings of watercolour and let the colours mix, run, play. I can add stencils or any other textural elements that can add visual interest as I build up a beautiful background knowing all the while that I've protected my main subject and that I can, once everything's dry, take off that masking fluid and I've got a textured crazy background with my foreground, with my subject protected and ready to work on in a different way so I get even more contrast. Now I must point out that this isn't <laughs> the traditional way of using masking fluid. It's actually used in traditional watercolour in a very, very different way from masking out very precise areas that people might want to keep white, uh, like the crests of waves or a sparkle in the eye. But that's the joy of art and art supplies is you can use them however suits you. Now, all of that to show you this, my new masquerade marker. So this is just a different way of applying that same masking fluid. So they come to you unprimed. There's a felt nib in there. They work exactly the same way as a paint pen. Uh, you need to give it a shake before you start with the lid on. Very first time you prime it. And there's that little dimple in the top of the lid. You can use that to prime not just your masquerade markers but any paint pen they usually have that dimple in the top and then you can just draw with them so I'm just going to freehand sketch out a face and see where this leads us oh I meant to mention earlier the footage I was showing you of the masking fluid in action that's from my wonderland online workshop which is all about watercolor and I use the masking fluid in different ways in that workshop and if you want to and it's also got figure drawing face drawing and watercolor techniques and if you wanted to learn how to draw faces I've got like I'm drawing here whimsical uh, imaginative or faces from the imagination rather I've got my book beautiful faces or uh, all of the Beautiful Faces online workshop and other workshops on my website that you can see. I always forget to mention the workshops. 
<laughs> now I'm priming the blue version of the masquerade marker they're exactly the same the formula is exactly exactly the same in each one it's just one has the blue ink one has pink ink the reason they have the color in them rather than the colorless version that I started this whole video off with that is just easier to see where you've placed it and in some instances the blue is going to suit better some instances the pink is going to suit you better but and it will dry with that color in there so that you can see but that will completely go uh, when you when it, the, the liquid rubber or the latex when that is dry and we remove it uh, there'll be no color left behind it's purely to help you see where you're using it and you can see the amount of control that you have I'm just adding flowing lines and for the hair adding a little bit of flippery around the neck and a few little dots for the background area as well keeping in mind that I'm don't have anywhere specific that we're traveling to yet <laughs> I, I just know that I want to create a face I want to create with watercolor and well that's that's all I know at this point so I'm, I'm letting this dry completely so that masking fluid really does need to be dry it doesn't take very long especially when you're using the masquerade markers oh and one of the other things I need to point out is masking fluid can stink it really smells a bit grim but because of the way that we that it's being used from the masquerade marker you don't get that smell when you're using it from the bottle with the brush ew it's foul so I'm getting out a whole bunch of watercolors here these I've got my art time watercolors which I can wear on my wrist I've got my fantastic palettes which are the mermaid scale that is a magnetic palette with mermaid scale shaped things and I've made my own watercolors so the fairy dust pigments I've got my aqua pastels as well another water soluble thing and my watercolors from my petite palettes which is the turquoise teal and gold tins <sighs> <laughs> I can also use uh, ladybug dotters which are a water soluble ink as well and I'm gonna put incredible inks in there also anything water soluble you can use on the top of the masquerade marker and I'm just loosely putting the ink in there the masquerade marker is going to act as a little border so the uh, the watercolor can sit inside it like a little swimming pool uh, it can burst the dam though it can go over the top but you just have a take a care as you're creating uh, I'm making a little light skin tone using kindness matters from my art time set which is on my wrist a little bit of buff from the tin set there and I also uh, have used a little bit of Lauren Saint she's one of my favorite artists from the aqua pastel set so see how I'm scribbling it down on my splat mat and then adding water and I'm getting a nice varied skin tone light skin tone and where I want to build up to a darker tone I can add a little bit of cocoa in there as well and just loosely putting that watercolor in there now if there are areas like this one that um, was an area where like I, I put a little bit of the masking fluid down where it didn't need to be all you have to do is wait for it to dry and then peel it off and done and then if you wanted to reapply it again you could do that let it dry and then keep on going I'm adding a little of I'm really mixing the different watercolors here and using more transparent watercolors from my tin set and the more opaque colors from my art time wrist set that's a optional little wrist strap too you don't have to have it on your wrist but it is handy when you've got lots of things out on the table like this and you've got little watercolors right there and I thought it would be fun to have a chunky loose application of watercolor and then I'll have these nice clean white lines once I remove the masquerade marker and I just thought that would be a nice contrast sort of look like batik I'm adding ink and turquoise and butterfly uh, watercolor there also some of my incredible ink the color I just added is fresh air and I've put a little bit of plain water down onto my page obviously I'm using one of my watercolor paper journals 
Uh, not every journal can handle watercolour. And popping that water down and then putting mermaid marker into it as well. I'm also putting my mermaid marker in jellyfish into the mystic watercolour from the little tin sets so that I'm getting a nice variety of purples there as well. And why not just finish up with a little bit of Ladybug Dotter. This is the neon high roller set uh, and I'm going to add a little water to it and then I'm going to just dot over the top of the little masquerade marker dots that I did before. Just see what happens. I went off, I uh, took the dogs for a walk, let everything dry off a bit and now I'm going to add some more layers. I'm going to add some sparkly shimmery watercolour. So I'm adding various fairy dust pigment watercolours on there which will have a nice little sparkle and I want to add a little bit more something something to the background so I thought oh, I might try stripes. So I'm adding golden bird wing and I think the other colour was question mark in the background just some little stripes. So then I've got more visual texture but it's very different to all of the swirling lines and the motion of my subject. And one of the things I just love about watercolour is how you can just keep layering it if you want to. As much as the paper can take, the paper's kind of the thing that tells you <laughs> when it's had enough. And then you just need to let things dry. So I've everything is dry on here. I'm just adding another little layer, deepening shadows. And I can really see that the eyes of my little subject here are quite crooked. And uh, I'm going to start leveling them up with the watercolor. And then I can, once I've started to remove that masking fluid, I can do that as well. Any of the watercolour that is sitting on top of the masquerade marker will go. It will dry on top of there, but it will peel off with the masquerade marker. And of course, you don't just have to use your masquerade marker on the paper itself. You can work on top of watercolours and colours that you've already put down. So I'm adding some more of my masquerade marker. Really you have to let it dry and <laughs> I didn't let it dry quite enough here. It was fine but just don't do as I do, do as I say. Just let it dry. Don't be impatient like me and I'm adding some darker colour over the top and then what I'm hoping will happen is I'll have uh, some lighter lines. So remember the, the background colour that I've given it, those lighter blues and then it'll have that darker purple so I'll have a little bit of a shadow line in there as well. And now I'm going to remove the masquerade marker. Everything is dry and I'm going to use one of my bookish erasers. You can use a specialised frisket or mask removal tool which is really just a hard eraser or a suede cleaner, it's just a piece of rubber. Uh, when you use an eraser you also get the crumbs of the eraser itself, that's why the harder tool, although it's still soft enough to remove the uh, fl masking fluid without any impact to the paper uh, or to the artwork. And you can also just use your fingers. I find that uh, using fingers though you do run the risk of smudging the artwork because we do have natural oils uh, on our fingertips and that can actually leave a little waterproof layer on the artwork so it's just quicker and easier to use an eraser or a um, mask pickup tool. And I'm also using a clean soft paintbrush just to brush away any of the eraser crumbs and the uh, masquerade marker little rolled up bits of rubber just brush them off the paper and it's actually <laughs> such a fun process. I'm just going to tip my book up, shake off any other little bits and pieces that might still be on there and this is one of the great things about a splat mat or having something a surface saver underneath your work is you can just simply roll this up, take it outside and shake off all of the little crumbs. 
Let's have a closer look. You can see wherever I've put the masquerade marker has stayed white, the paper. Or remember I put the secondary lines in as well over the first lot of painting. And then I removed that as well. So I've got like a shadow line there. And I'm going to now add in my details. And let's see what happens next. I'm going to add some structured lines uh, my darkest darks so i'm going to use one of my fountain pens and i can also see and that's just got some uh, darker ink in it but i could see that the eyes are very crooked that things aren't symmetrical and sometimes that doesn't bother me because we don't have symmetrical faces but sometimes it does bother me and in this instance it did i thought i could just tricksy it up you know take pinch a little bit off the top add a little bit to the bottom you know on either side and i'm using my symmetry grid which is actually part of the clearly clear thinking um little desk set that comes with all of my uh, stamp blocks and i'm using this counting across and just getting these eyes a little bit more symmetrical like I said I don't need it doesn't have to be perfect but I need to get it to that point where it doesn't bother me and then I can relax and just get on with the artwork that's all I ask I just don't want my artwork to bother me the ink in the fountain pen that I used was a waterproof ink so I know that I can put watercolor and other ink things over the top of it and it won't bleed once it's dry I'm going to add a little bit more uh, ladybug dotter so this is um, pink champagne it's just one of my favorite colors it's a beautiful tear duct and lip color and a little bit of green light for the eyes which is going to be a very luminous green it's not going to look very natural but I want to use that as a base and then I'll use a more olive green from the metal the little petite palette watercolor set going to use my storytime paint pen in the fine in snow white a little bit of sparkle in the eye and this is the ltq pen this gold feather looking thing which stands for license to quill and it is a waterproof black really beautiful formula that just goes on top of everything uh, this is the larger of my uh, storytime paint pens in the snow white i'm just playing with the lines I'm just enjoying the journey through the artwork. I'm adding some of my Magic Wand colored pencils, which are a nice uh, pigmented, soft colored pencil. And I love the look of colored pencils. Very, it's subtle uh, and it's a nice contrast to these more definite lines. I, I, I want to leave those white lines and then try and make the skin and the details more just softer so that there's more of a contrast between these two things because to me that's what's interesting about this and I'm applying them with one of my batten blenders and applying it like actual makeup more than anything uh, the, the actual palette pastels are so finely milled and the batten blender pushes that pigment into the paper but you can still shape it with a brush and that will be a very soft application and if I want the color to be more intense then I would use the batten blender which just applies more of the color lovely part about palette pastels is I can just erase them which you just saw me doing and I'm adding a little bit of silf which is this olive green when you look at it as just a watercolor you think oh you know it's kind of this muddy brownie green it's such a handy color because to make bright colors sing we need a little bit of neutral and that neutral green combined with just that bright green that i put down in the eyes singing out just makes the eyes more luminous and also a little bit more natural looking and again, just I can add some little highlights back in if I've come over with my palette pastels. In this fairly short art session, I've really had a great load of fun with color, with different techniques. So this is just one way to use masquerade markers. And I love how I've got that beautiful chunky watercolor underneath, refined it with other art supplies but these lovely white crisp 
lines. It looks like the ocean. So I think this is definitely a mermaid. What do you think? Uh, maybe she's a landlocked mermaid and her hair is what reminds her of home. The Masquerade Markers are a Jane Davenport headquarters or JDHQ exclusive. That means you can only find them at janedavenport.com. We send all over the world every single day and love, love, love looking after uh, everyone that orders from us. We love wrapping everything. So when you get your parcel, it feels like an arty party. To see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to my website, janedavenport.com, where I've got tons of videos as well and lots of resources. And I upload, well, I try every day to Instagram, uh, where I'm showing different techniques, new art supplies and all of the fun that I'm having with my creativity. I hope you have a creative day wherever you are and thanks for watching.